Oh my god. Oblivion, he's here. Come last, let's go. A few moments later. <sighs> oh, he's tough. Oh, the shield's almost down, guys. Get back in there. Three weeks later. Come on. He's going down. We'll get him. We can't fail the multiverse. Get back in there. 12 o'clock midnight. Six months later. We did it everyone! Yes! Oh, Oblivion! He's defeated and the multiverse is saved and... I thought it was Monday. Hey guys, welcome to the second of my bonus Broken Meeple reviews. First was Brass, and this one is... Sentinels in the Multiverse Oblivion. This has been a Kickstarter that has been going for years. I think it was, what, like two years ago or something, it feels like, that I first backed this expansion, and finally it arrives, and finally I get a chance to really plow into it. Now, if you've kept together with my top 75 and top 100 games in recent past, you'll be no surprise, you're not surprised that Sentinels and Multiverse was my favourite game of all time. Is it still my favourite game of all time? You'll have to wait and see when I do this year's top 100. But, it's no, like, no secret that this is a game I adore. Sentinels and Multiverse, just for me, I know it's not for everybody, but, and, you know, I give this a 10, that does not mean it's a perfect game, there are issues, but I love superheroes, absolutely love superheroes, and I love co-ops. So you put the two together, that's already a good mix. Then you give me an individual deck for my character, so not deck building. So I'm playing my own character with my own unique abilities. Fantastic, you know, player powers, what up the wazoo. Then you give me comic book style artwork that fits the theme, fantastic. Then you give me like, thematic battles and heroes parodying ones that we know from Marvel and DC but not straight up, you know, like not just playing Captain America but playing Legacy for example and oh god yes it is a game I absolutely adore and it's um well we'll get on to the reason why this box is empty a bit later but uh first there was this then we had Rook City and Relics now in one box but previously done separately then we had a, um, a couple of small box expansions. I don't have those, but you know, they just added more of the good stuff, just like Rook City and Infernal Relics did. Then we had Vengeance, which added a cool new mechanic of having you fight mini villains. So you felt like a, you met up like with a group, think like the Justice League versus the Legion of Doom, that kind of thing. And then from there, Villains in the Multiverse, where we expanded on that front, gave us more mini villains to choose from, really cool. And now finally, we end the Sentinels and the Multiverse franchise with Oblivion, yes. Oblivion is the new and, from what we have been told, final expansion for Sentinels and the Multiverse. And I'm content with that. You know, there's been a lot of expansions, I have a lot of content, the fact that it's ending, perfectly fine with me. And I never got into this whole like print and play thing, I think it's called the Cauldron, that you can get online with these new characters that people have made in the community. Fair play, I'm sure they're great, I'm just not a big print and play type person. So, you know, I'm just sticking with the main content. But what does this one do? This adds, effectively, Infinity War into this. <laughs> you have this giant baddie, so instead of Thanos, you now have Oblivion. He's kind of like, um, kind of like Galactus, if you took off those sh that stupid helmet and then made him, you know, able to rewrite reality. He's this huge cosmic beam that suddenly comes down and decides, right, Whole multiverse, gotta go. You know, you guys have been thwarting my plans for ages. I'm now here, prepare to die. <laughs> and die, you probably will a lot. But the idea is, is that now you have to fight this huge ultra baddie. Previously, you fought a single villain in a single environment with one villain deck, one environment deck. Now with this, you have to fight on two separate battle zones, each with its own environment and three other environments pegged to one side. So you're technically having five in one game. 
And in each of these battle zones, you will move your heroes from one to the other, along with Oblivion himself, who's a little sort of cardboard miniature, and his Legion of Scions, uh, S-C-I-O-N, I think that's how you pronounce it, Scions. And these effectively, well, <laughs> I already compared this to Infinity War, so think Oblivion is Thanos, and think the Scions are, what did he call them? The Children of Thanos? I think that was it. Yeah, just think they're basically his, like, lieutenants. You know, they're all unique, they've all got different abilities, and these are being summoned as well as the Zeon men, who are kind of like the henchmen. So think that you've got the big bad guy, bunch of lieutenants, and the pawns, <laughs> essentially. But you're doing this on two battlefronts now, and your heroes can go to different ones. You don't all have to be in the same area. Sometimes you have to split your forces up. Sometimes you want to be together, just so that you can really hammer into a particular enemy. And the idea is, is that you play similar to how you're used to Sentinels in the Multiverse, where you each have your deck of cards and you build yourself up, get your items out, your equipment, play one shot, play ongoing cards, you know, play your equipment. So you cater to your players, you know, your, your hero's strategy and game style, but you now have to go through a three-stage process of killing Oblivion. First, you have the unkillable mode, where he's on 10,000 HP and has a giant shield around him. You have to get the shield down. Then you have two phases in this little booklet that has about like 118 and 120 hit points, you know, high hit points, and which have different effects as to what he's doing. You have to beat each stage in order to finally defeat him. For anyone used to Sentinels in the Multiverse, this is going to be familiar territory to you. You still have your decks, you still have your heroes, you play them, the environment does something, the villain does something, the uh, Scions do something, you know, each of them has their own respective decks. And, you know, we'll get onto the, the slight issue with that later on, but, you know, it's familiar ground, just think more of it. It really does feel epic. And again, more on that later. First, components and quality. Well, it's the same sort of style you're used to. It's this comic book style artwork, which is hit and miss for some people. Some people don't like it. I personally love it. I'm not going to say it's gorgeous artwork or it deserves an award, but when you think that this is meant to be like reading a, an old fashioned comic strip, you know, it fits it. The heroes fit it. And by now I've, you know, learned about these heroes, you know, they've got backstories and and it's really cool in this one that, you know, some of the heroes are actually previous villains. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know what? The whole universe is about to be destroyed. Um, truce? <laughs> you know, some of the, the hero cards you have in this are previous villains, not necessarily redeemed, but they're on your side. You know, it's a case of the friend of my friend is my enemy, in a sense. Uh, no, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Get it right, Luke. Now, there are other aspects to this expansion which were Kickstarter and separate. Uh, one of them being, you know, some bonus heroes and uh, environments and that that you can get. Most of these were stretch goals and you will be able to buy these separately at retail. So, you know, they're all pretty sweet, but I'm not going to talk too much about those. The other major aspect was a collector's box to store everything because these boxes are great and all, but you can only store so many cards in them. I mean, why do you think I had four of them? You know, <laughs> three of them before and now this one. So what I will do is I will talk a bit about the collector's box sort of at the end of the review after I've given my verdict because it was a Kickstarter and you know, you can buy it separately. You will be able to buy the collector's box on retail, but that's not how I'm rating this expansion. It's a separate item. I am rating the expansion purely on the heroes and environments you get within it and the, the whole concept of Oblivion. So very quickly, just to mention the heroes and environments, you get five new environments and five new heroes. Uh, no villains, because let's face it, you got one giant one, one more do you want. But I really like what they've done with some of these. There's some really interesting environments. You've got like a, a refuge for, you know, the Atlantean people. You've got a film studio, which is really cool. You've got uh, a sort of one of these like military forts where they've done genetic experiments on various people and you end up going up against the guards but also against the inmates themselves, you know, that's fresh out of something like, uh, I suppose, what's the closest thing I think of? Supergirl or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, they've dabbled in that a bit. And, you know, they're really entertaining environments. The heroes, wow, these heroes are great. I mean, not just because of the theme aspect that it's a villain now turned hero, but they work really well particularly the first Oblivion game I played, I had um, Lifeline, he's now called, who was previously Deadline, and uh, Luminary, who was uh, Baron Blade. And these two heroes were like the MVPs. 
I'm not saying they're stupidly powerful, but they just worked for me in that game. And they're not too complex to play, you know, you've got some that are harder than others, but Luminary, for instance, pretty straightforward. He has a bunch of devices from gun turrets and little robots and healing nanites and stuff, and a couple of doomsday devices fitting in with his feet, you know, who was a mad bomber, and the more of these you can get out, the better. They each have their own hit points, they each do different stuff. The more devices you can get, the better. And he's got a way to churn through his deck in order to find them and build up a nice big trash pile so that he can launch his Doomsday device. He was really cool in the Oblivion game. He was probably half the reason I won it. And, you know, Lifeline was also really cool in how he manipulated ongoing cards and how he was able to sort of hurt himself in order to help others. And the other heroes do good jobs as well. I'm not going to go into like strategic depth into each hero, but just to let you know that if you were just buying this purely for the good stuff, you know, the, sorry, like more of the good stuff, heroes and environments, you're getting a solid set of heroes and environments here. However, you're probably not buying this for that. You're probably buying it for the Oblivion expansion. And that was, you know, I wanted more content, but... I was really jazzed up. I mean, I was on that hype train and I was sticking my head out the window, holding onto the side, waving to everybody on that hype train. But, no, I will be object, you know, I will be approaching this objectively. You know, just because I backed it on the Kickstarter does not mean I'm automatically going to give it a 10 out of 10 just by default. So, a lot of it was riding on this Oblivion expansion. Um, sorry, the mechanic. Does it work? Yes and no. It's, in some respects, it's absolutely amazing. In other respects, it needs a bit of a tweak. Um, well, let's go into the positives first. If you wanted this game to feel epic, and it didn't already feel epic with the other villains you fought, or that five-man team thing, oh my god. This is like literally replaying the Infinity War. It's that epic on scale. You have the multi-environments, you have your you know, your four heroes, however many you're playing with, you've got the huge baddie who's like moving from battle zone to battle zone and doing stuff, you've got the scions, you've got the Xeon men, there is a lot going on in this game. And on top of that, the one of the best aspects, you know, to add to the epic scale is that you complete these objectives. You know, you can grab uh, an objective off a deck and if you meet the condition, whether it's discard equipment or do so much damage or be the last one standing, whatever, it flips over and it becomes either an ongoing boon, you know, a card that gives you an ongoing really cool effect, or it turns into like a mini ally. Think like the Sentinels uh, from a previous expansion that were like the 14 HP allies you get these new allies that give you other cool powers that you can use. They act like independent, you know, heroes for you to use. Really cool. If there's one thing that this Oblivion thing does well, it takes that huge dollop of theme that you had and slaps another giant huge dollop of theme on it. It's so rich in theme, it's unreal. I had a game, the first game I played, I had uh, the block as an environment, it's a prison complex. And I had a, I was struggling to keep things under control in the other battle zone, I had to leave it unoccupied. But then the guards came out of the inmate deck along with their warden. And they helped keep the scion there at bay, you know, they were constantly peppering at the scion. And the scion couldn't hurt my heroes because I wasn't there. You know, cards only affect you in the battlefront that you're in, so you can do some cool tactical movement play in order to be out of harm's way in a sense. And they were keeping them at bay and it was like, you know, it's like the movie cutting to the scene where the, you know, the, the environment defenders are helping you out and trying to stop the big baddie because at the end of the day, the whole multiverse is going to be destroyed. You know, we all got a pan together. Eventually they fell, but then I was able to come in and deal with the scion again. Little touches like that. And these objectives, oh my god, they're so good. I mean, they give, they're tailored, they're sort of tailored to characters. I mean, you can tell from the, uh, the, what do you call it, the flavor text and the picture that that particular character would really like it. But when they flip to these allies, like, you know, you beat up this, uh, you know, demonic, like, uh, succubus creature or something who just comes out of a portal and starts, like, you know, ruining your day as a side mission. As soon as you beat her, she flips over and becomes this angelic warrior, you know, a bit like uh, the fanatic. But Seraph, I think he's called. And he can do a really cool ability to hit multiple characters and allow you to use extra powers if he hurts himself. Very much like the angels did. And 
It just suits great. It's like you dealt with this little side mission and then an ally comes to your cause and you can get multiple allies. They chain and do different things. The extra boons that you get, like you do one objective and suddenly you end up with this relic that allows you to resurrect your hero at a moment's notice. And well, let's face it, yeah, Marvel, how much resurrection do they do on a regular basis? So it's wonderful touches like that. And just to make it feel super epic. I've never felt more thematically immersed in a superhero game than when I have played this variant. Yeah, and it's challenging. It's definitely a challenge. You know, if you're playing with harder heroes and you're playing with like less than four, you're probably going to get beaten up a lot, particularly with some of the signs that are in there. You want a challenge? This is definitely a challenge. You know, granted in one game, I it took me a while and more on that later. And I did beat Oblivion with comfortable room to spare, but I was playing the easiest heroes I could find against some of the easier Scions. So, you know, and it wasn't exactly a pushover either. So when you're using a mix and you're randomizing which ones pop up and using harder heroes, it's a challenge, this expansion. And, on, and you sort of look at it and think, you know, the biggest surprise I got was I thought, oh my God, I'm getting absolutely pelted. Well, I'm, I'm gonna die in like two seconds flat if I don't get my stuff up and running. What am I supposed to do? Is that it? No, because in this one, you actually resurrect. You, you, your, your deck essentially goes out of play temporarily. Your hero is incapacitated with the rewards that someone else could pick up later. But then instead of being out of the game, like before where you just had one power that you used every round, you get to look in your collection of Sentinels in the Multiverse, grab any other hero that you can find other than the one that you were just playing, use their deck and come back in. Because essentially the main way that you die is by a timer. You know, Oblivion is coming and he's destroying these environments. And as soon as you haven't got any spare environments to have two in play, the Multiverse is destroyed and you lose. So you're effectively racing against time to beat him before he comes by and destroys the entire multiverse. So you don't have one life. You have infinite lives, as long as you can beat him in this timer. Obviously, if you keep dying regularly, you've got to build yourself back up and you're going to run out of time. But you can even use variants of the same deck you were playing. You don't have to change a hero entirely, but if you were, say, getting a bit bored with that particular hero, you could just switch to another one. But I love the idea that I've got like, what, four, three or four versions of Legacy? You know, the uh, America's hero, his daughter, and two variants of him. And if I my Legacy goes kaput, the base one, I just flip out his daughter and I can use the same Legacy deck. It's like respawning in with a whole new hero. It's brilliant. I love that. Again, thematically rich. However, <laughs> right. <laughs> That's like the main good thing about the um, Oblivion expansion. If you want the theme, you want the challenge, you want the ability to use different heroes and have all these cool objectives. I mean, the objectives, there's a lot of them and they are easily the best part of it. And you want like a multitude of different villains, you want the variety in spades. This expansion is gonna be your friend. However, I must also point out there are a couple of caveats with this. Big caveats. Firstly, Think about how hard it was to track stuff beforehand, unless you were like me, used to this game. Times that by at least five, and you've got this. Because previously you were tracking a villain with various minions, and you were tracking what your heroes did and one environment. Now you have two battle zones. You have two environments. You have two separate villain turns with the Scions. The Scions have their own starting and the turn stuff. The Xeon men that come out and they, you know, they're like men made of energy that Oblivion occasionally blows up in order to get like really nasty stuff on you. They have end of turn effects. Oblivion himself has, you know, a deck and cards and effects that go off. Not as many effects, but he has the deck. And you have your heroes. And you have all these objectives to keep track of. There's a lot to keep track of. <laughs> If you weren't comfortable doing it in previous versions, this is going to overwhelm you. So much so that if you, I do not recommend this at all for anyone new to Sentinels. You will just simply blow their mind and they will not enjoy this. This is for veterans of Sentinels only. I would not teach this to anyone. I would not even make this the first expansion to get if you're into this. 
I would seriously bolster up the other expansions first and make this like a final purchase. You know, it really is hard mode for the mental tracking. You know, and the Sidekick app probably will take a while before it's updated to this. And if you're not comfortable with it, then, you know, be a little bit wary for that. I was piloting you know, four decks solo against this. Even, even my head was burning a little bit by the time I was done. And I'm used to the tracking in this. You know, I can handle a Vengeance team fine and I can handle a normal villain with ease. This was quite a challenge. You know, you really do need preferably three or four of you who know this game inside out to really be honing in on what is going off where. And you're going to make mistakes, but it's a co-op. If you just accept that these things happen, it's not the end of the world. The other big caveat, and this is a bit of a flaw with it, and I do wish maybe it was sorted out. The box says, where does it say it? Where is it? Got it on here. Uh, here we go. 90 to 120 minutes. In what parallel multiverse dimension is that true? <laughs> no way. I want to see a time lapse video of someone playing this in 90 to 120 minutes. Maybe if you die early. <laughs> Maybe. But I can tell you, this is long. If you thought, you know, Sentinels Multiverse was usually what, like a 60 to 90 minute game usually, and that was a good length. This is more than two hours, easily. And that's probably with multiple people playing it, who can like, you know, you take charge of the Xeon deck, you take charge of the Sans, you take charge of Oblivion and your own hero, and we should be in a good stead. You've got to communicate with each other. Solo, I lost track of how much time this took me. This took me between like the three to four hour mark, I think, to complete, and I had to take a break in between. You know, I was learning the rules and, you know, stuff like that, so I probably was slowed down a little bit, but this took me a long time to do solo. So much so that if I'm going to do this solo in the future, I'm going to have to set aside time, I'm going to have to probably do a bit of the game and then leave it and then come back to it later. This is probably something I need to reserve for Sentinels and the Multiverse veterans alone, and even then it's going to be a typical game night, or it's going to be something I do at a convention. It is long. I don't know where they got 90 to 120 minutes from, but that's a lie. It's a pure lie. I, you know, prove me wrong. Please prove me wrong. Please show me I was doing something incorrect or anything to prove to me you can play the Oblivion scenario and finish it positively, not get killed, you know, actually finish it and succeed in 90 to 120 minutes. Please, I dare you to prove me wrong on this. But from the experience I had when I was playing this with people and playing it myself, Never did a game finish in less than two hours, unless you were beaten, you know. And in terms of the win-loss ratio, I've lost it more than I've won it, but I have won it. This is not impassable. It is possible to beat it, but you're in it for the long run if you do end up <laughs> going to win it, you know. If you get killed after a couple of hours, two and a half hours of play, then, uh, well, we tried, guys, but you at least had an epic time getting there. I do wish it was a bit shorter. That is a bit of a flaw with this expansion and it's a little bit of a disappointment in that regard. I'm willing to put in the time for something like this, but I know a lot of you probably won't be. So bear that in mind if you're really on the fence about this. You know, are you willing to put in that length? Yes or no? That's gonna be a big tell for you. So not much else I can really say about this expansion. It gives you a solid set of heroes and environments. And if that's the main reason you want to buy this expansion, then by all means go buy this expansion because they are brilliant heroes and environments to add to your mix. You know, to create that kind of villain turned hero for a brief stint. And the environments are really, really good. I like all of them. There was no dud environment in this deck. With the Oblivion scenario, I love it, but I'm hesitant. <laughs> it's... It's thematically rich. It is dripping in theme, like out of every orifice of this box, it is dripping theme. If you, like me, love Marvel and DC and thought the Infinity War movie was fantastic, this is basically like playing the Infinity War in a card game. It's that, it feels epic, you know, having those different objectives that come out, you know, and I used half the deck in my first win against Oblivion. Half. And I went through a lot of objectives. There's a lot in that deck. And I know they've said that this is the final expansion, but, you know, Great in Games, if you want to release a small promo pack of 25 objectives or something to add to that deck, 
then please do. I won't mind, you know, you don't need another big box expansion, just give me a promo set of more objectives and I'll love you for it because they are easily the best thing in that scenario and the fact that they come out at different times, you may not be able to succeed in all of them, you might never see some of them during the game, you'll have vastly different experiences. I think the replay value of Oblivion is off the charts because of the objectives, because of the like what, like 10, 15 different scions I think you can have, there's like a lot of them and you know, all the different environments you can pick. You pick five environments, there's a lot of environments in this game now. Pick whatever five you like. <laughs> All the combinations are endless at this point. So overall, with this, I have to be careful as to what kind of mark I give it. You know, I enjoyed my experience of this. I'm keeping it. I will play the scenario, you know, multiple times. I think it's excellent. But the caveats that I've mentioned are pretty big caveats. The length and the extra tracking, it's gonna put off a lot of people and this makes this not very accessible to casual players of Sentinels in the Multiverse. This is definitely gonna be for the veteran gamers and that's gonna put off some people. And it's a little disappointment that maybe it couldn't just have been a little bit more streamlined. I mean, I heard in the designer diaries and that, that this was getting streamlined over time. God knows what it must have been before. <laughs> it must have been insanely complex in the original draft. But it is thematically rich, dripping in theme, it's entertaining as all get out if you're willing to put in that effort. So personally, I think the highest I can give it, I can give it a solid eight. Solid approved rating of eight because I think it is highly enjoyable and if you are a fan of the system and you're used to the tracking and don't mind the length, you will grab this and you will love it. But those two caveats are pretty big caveats and it has to drop the mark down from that nine to an eight. I, I didn't say it was perfect, but you know, Nine to an eight, it has to happen because those two caveats are big ones. So that's all I can really say about Oblivion, you know, solid, but with caveats. Probably not as amazeballs as I was hoping it was gonna be riding that hype train, but still pretty solid. Just like I say, bear those two caveats in mind. So if that's all you need to hear about, then by all means, thank you for listening and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see, and I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review, but if you want to stick around and hear more about the collector's box that will be on separate retail that you can use to store all your cards in and then some, then stick around. I'll cover that now after I say goodbye. So for the rest of you, take care. And remember, if the multiverse does get blown up at the end of the day, it was still only a game. At least you had epic fun, right? See you next time. Okay everyone, this is a bit of an experiment really, because I've never really tried doing this, you know, where I use my gimbal and record it into a microphone in order to do sort of video run through footage. You know, I tried it at the expo and, you know, it, it was hit and miss, but it, it came out okay. But I'm using the gimbal to record this on my mobile phone and recording on a separate microphone. So hopefully this will turn out okay. But yes, and you will see things like the, uh, you know, the camera and that in the background, but you know, I can only do so much to tidy up the place. This is the Sentinels of the Multiverse Collector's Box. As you can see, it is um, somewhat huge. You know, if I pan around here, you can see this takes up a lot of space on my table, you know, my Geekson table. It is pretty sizable. However, it's not that heavy. This is made out of, you know, cardboard effectively. It's a cardboard box. So even with all the cards in it, it's not so heavy that you couldn't take this to a game night. It might be the only thing you take to a game night, but at least you could. Because unlike wooden boxes, you know, the vaults that I've got, you end up with, you know, you don't end up with this problem that it's so heavy you couldn't physically carry it if you tried. Of course, it's solid black and, you know, it's got the logo on the top, so we're not talking fancy, you know, pictures all over the exterior, which is a little bit of a shame. But the idea is, is that what you do is you flip this little magnetic lid and there you can see all the various kind of Sentinels comic strip covers, you know, and suddenly all the colors start coming. Pull this down as well, even more. So the way this works is that it's basically a lot of drawers. Each one containing uh, either, you know, the rule books and various uh, oversized cards. You've got these ones taking like villains and environments. You've got them. Um, let me see if I can pan down a bit easier and zoom in. There we go. You've got the villains, you've got heroes and the variants, and you've got more heroes in here. 
So these are essentially giant drawers. You just pull it in and then zoom around a bit more. So in here, you can keep all the rule books. You can have a uh, Oblivion, you can have the, uh, it actually gives you, I forgot to mention, it actually gives you a story arc of how it all began. It's really cool, have a read of it. Uh, but then it also gives you a comparison booklet for all the heroes and villains that exist, which is really cool, because now it's all in one giant compendium, including everything from the Oblivion expansion, so, and all the promos to date. So if you want a comprehensive guide, there you go. And other than that, I'm just keeping all the rule books from various other expansions in there. If I pull it out further, I have a couple of the oversized rule cards from some of the promos. And this little box. This is the foil uh, villains box. And technically I don't have to keep it in here, but, you know, it. I don't want to get rid of the box. But there's nowhere else for me to store it and I don't want to store it separately. So it just about fits in here if you put it lengthways. It's a bit of a snug fit. And maybe that's slightly scuffing the top of the box, but uh, it still shuts. It's no big deal. I'm not too fussed. The fact that I can store it in here is good enough for me. So in here we have, let's see, we have oversized villain and tokens. So I got a couple of bags, you know, specially made to keep tokens in, but I can keep my, uh, as you can see, the various oversized villain cards in there with some tokens. I can have tokens in there. I've got uh, the Oblivion stuff in there. It doesn't come with too much. I've got the original you know, um, sort of status tokens in here. Uh, the reason why they're bagged up is because in here I've got these special ones that this comes with. Uh, nope, that's the hit point tokens. Don't want that. You want this one. Yeah, so you got these ones now that come with, you know, they're in boys. They've got uh, the actual sort of picture of the damage on there. So like the lightning has actual lightning on it and that. It, it helps you with damage types. You will still need the original tokens though for things like plus one damage and minus one damage and can't deal damage, but these are a better replacement than, you know, some of those. That's one big draw for that. And uh, let's see, let's go on to the villains and villains environment. So villains, whoop, here we go. And this is pretty much the context for all these draws. They have these really nice, as you can see, quite thick, you know, card dividers. You know, they already made pretty good dividers in a normal game, but you won't need any of them anymore because you have these. Each one has, you know, a cool sort of picture for the various uh, villain that's on there. Uh, it has the logo in its uh, particular font. And with these, you, whoop, one's trying to get out there. And here, you just stash the deck. So if I come up here a little bit, let's go for, uh, what was a good one there? Well, Citizen Dawn, there you are. So there's Citizen Dawn's deck. I have mine in a sort of standard size sleeves, you know, all of them, and there you go. You just literally flip to the divider and pull it out. And as you can see, if I push this box back a little bit, how much can I pull this out? Uh, yeah, there's a foam block in there and that's about the end of the drawer. So there's a lot in there with the content I've got and there's some Oblivion stuff at the front. And that's not even all the villains. Uh, there's more here. <laughs> And this is primarily the uh, like the vengeance villains, you know, the mini ones. If you don't have that, then obviously you don't need this much space. But then look at this. Oop, just go down a little bit. There we go. All those environments, all those dividers with, you know, a picture of what each one is like. And there's the deck into the Primera. Uh, the Freedom Tower. I've done it in alphabetical order because, well, I'm a sad act like that. So you can organize these how you like. And it just makes for easy access to all your cards. All the way out in there. And then we come on to the heroes and the heroes and variants. So I'll push this out. And my arm's getting tired from holding this gimbal already. I need to get the stand. But phone block in here. This is the second part. So let's pull out two drawers actually. So here, what I've got is there's one for the like hero character cards. So what I have done is I have taken the hero character cards out of their decks. So if I look at absolute zero here, this is just the deck, no hero to go with it. Because in this front drawer, they're all here. So you've got some of these new ones, but then you've got Ra and you know, that says, yeah, I've got the scholar there and then I've got the sentinels and that. I've kept, the, I've kept them singly in here by this divider. Now, you know, you're wondering, well, where's all the variant cards? Separate place. You can do this how you like, really. It doesn't really matter if you uh, 
decide to keep them with the heroes or not. But um, what I have done is put them at the end here. There's a divider of a very... This isn't in the collector's box. This is just something I borrowed from uh, the Oblivion set, I think, or previous one. But all my variants are in here. So, you know, the Naturalist variant, the Knife variant, you know, Haka variant, you know, other variants, Dr. Medico variant, you know, the Void Guard and stuff like that. You know, Absolute Zero, Bunker, another Legacy, Tachyon. They're all in here, and um, I believe... Uh, nope, these are the normal ones, but like I say, you can get all of these in a retail pack now, and they're all pretty solid. So I just look in there and grab the hero. It's not too difficult to find them. And down here, we have the foil hero character cards. Yes, I got the foil set. So there's a foil legacy. There's another foil legacy. There's another foil legacy. There's another foil legacy. <laughs> and then there's Bunker and Bunker and Bunker. Yeah, there's a lot of content for this game. And remember what I said about being able to change your hero? In the game when you fight against oblivion oh no legacy is incapacitated new legacy new legacy <laughs> new legacy <laughs> think come on marvel and dc do this all the time with timelines and crossovers and that just think of it as like basically a superhero fan's wet dream of doing this sort of thing so all the heroes fit in there again the two boxes i had to take them all the way out um, this drawer was a little bit stubborn when i first got it i have to admit for some reason this one was a little bit stuck but it wasn't too difficult for me to figure out why and sort of, I think there was like a little bit of a uh, card that was kind of stuck on here and it just blocked it. I got it off and like I say, you wouldn't even notice if I had told you. So it now fits fine. And then these go back in. Get them in there. So, whoop, come on. There we go. In there. That's all the drawers. And then to shut it, you may think, well, this doesn't really shut much. That's because, here we go. Yeah, it's a magnetic seal, so it doesn't, uh, you know, require you to leave it open. You just shut it, and there you go. The Sentinels and the Multiverse, you know, special box. If you are a fan of this franchise and you have as many cards as I do, I think this is a must buy. It is a great way to store all your cards and easily access them at home, and possibly even on a game night. If you're a casual gamer, though, you probably wanna think twice maybe or consider getting more expansions first because you should have enough storage space already this really is for you know the ones who have collected nearly all if not all of the promos the variants the uh the, you know, the expansions you know it's definitely worth it for them probably a bit costly for the casual gamer so that's definitely it for me now i hope you've enjoyed this long comprehensive review of sentinels and the multiverse oblivion and the collector's box i'll see you on the next broken meeple review Take care and enjoy saving the multiverse.